Hey hey everybody, it's Overkill here, and welcome to another part of the German Army Project. That's the only name I have for it right now, uh, until someone gives me a name that I really like. But today, uh, I'm going to be doing some unboxing. So basically, um, it's not really part of the German Army Project, I guess. It's just the models that are ordered. Um, so I guess the name doesn't really matter that much right now anyway. Um, so, oop, I hit the camera. So today, we are starting with a model that I want to review first, because, um, well, I guess it doesn't really matter. Uh, if I can review, if I review all of them, um, I can get get my hands on this now. But I'm just gonna get this one out of the way so that I can work on it as soon as possible. We have, bam, the Tiger One Offs E, um, one of my favorite tanks of World War II, um, due to just its size and brutish nature. And just look at it; it's absolutely beautiful. So this is made by, uh, well, obviously, okay. A lot of people on my channel probably aren't going to know anything about this. If you watched the German Army Project intro, um, you've seen that I unboxed this and talked a little bit about Bolt Action. But Bolt Action is a 28mm um, scale uh, World War II war game. And a war game is uh, something that uses models. Uh, if you've ever heard of Warhammer or Warhammer 40,000, it's like that. It's more like Warhammer 40,000 than fantasy, obviously, but um, yeah. But yeah, there's the box. It's made by World. It's made by Warlord Games, of course, or it's for Warlord Games, made by Atelier. Now, Atelier are a um, model making company um, that are a lot more detailed than most war game models. So this is going to look very awesome. But you can see it's a 156 scale hard plastic World War II German heavy tank. Um, now, this will this will give something away. The infantry boxes say 28 millimeter. This is 156. So you may be wondering what that means. Usually, 28 millimeter models are heroic scale. What's called heroic scale? Things are. Um, more um, not dynamic. They're they're more you know hands are bigger, faces are more like facial details are more bigger, so that you can paint them. It makes them easier to paint and easier to see. Whereas true scale m models um, are well, if you took a person and shrink them, and they sometimes some detail can be lost on those. So people take um, some creative liberties with uh, heroic scale models to make them look a lot better. For example. Um, my German infantry that I ordered, which you'll be, see video, you'll be seeing videos on soon enough. Oh, very professional, Ryan. Good job. Um, I was trying to focus and I knocked everything over. Yeah, if you see this uh, Fallschirmjäger model, um, you can see like it's not like 100% proportionate. Also, it doesn't want to focus. It's not 100% proportionate. His head's pretty big. The hands are pretty big. Stuff like that. Like, the things that people want to see are the things that are bigger. But yeah, um, the Tiger Offs E. If we look, take a look at the back, you can see a couple of uh, different paint jobs, one in the winter uh, and one for more late uh, Western Front, like after D-Day, perhaps. Also, I should focus, set this on continuous focus. There we go. Amongst the most feared tanks in the Second World War, the mere mention of the name Tiger was enough to cause panic amongst Allied armored formation. The Tiger was hurried into action on the Russian front as a response to the heavier Soviet tanks that had caught the Wehrmacht unaware, unawares. Uh, its massive square body and rounded turret was an intimidating sight to enemy tankers. The armor was tremendously thick and made of quality steel, making it largely invulnerable, at least frontally, to anti-tank fire. Its potent 88mm gun was a deadly weapon, effective against enemy tanks up to 3 kilometers and also firing a lethal high explosive shell. At 52 tons, the Tiger was sluggish, but its broad tracks ensured a reasonable cross-country performance. Its crews were specially trained as it was an expensive machine to build and maintain. A well-trained veteran crew of five men could take on several enemy tanks with a reasonable chance of defeating them all, with little danger to the crew or tank. Tigers were normally formed into, into separate heavy tank battalions and parceled out by the high command wherever they were needed most, their presence normally being enough to tip the balance in that sector. So yeah, you can see we have some uh, decals, so some numbers to put on the tanks, or on the tank, rather. And we have a model uh, commander. Now, this commander is true scale, sort of. Um, so you'll see the difference when we unbox this model. You can see him sitting on top of the uh, Western Front tank there. But yeah, um, it's also modeled with uh, Zimmert Anti-Magnetic Mine Paste, so that's nice. So yeah, let's crack this open and see what we get. Let me just get all that crap out of the way. Turn it more this way. All right. So if I put the box there, you can see here's the contents. They come in a nice little plastic bag. That's interesting. Um, and we also get. Oh, let me get this out. Oh, there's another thing. What is this? Order games bolt action. 
Oh, it's a little welcome from uh, the guys. Written by veteran game designers Alicio Cavatori and Rick Priestley, Bolt Action provides all the rules needed to bring the great battles of World War II to your tabletop. Interesting. Um, lots of World War II models. Yeah, so basically, guys, definitely, if you're interested in this, go check out Warlord Games. Um, they have some of the best, best priced um, models on the market for how nicely detailed they are. And then there's a little Italery um, thing as well, talking about um, how fancy their models are. You can read that there if you want. But yeah, basically, that's that. So now we have instructions. Um, usually for a man, you know, you throw these out whenever you get something, but uh, I think I might keep these. Uh, tiny pieces in me don't go t well together. But yeah, basically, that's the finished thing. But yeah, let's actually look at the, the thing that matters, the sprues. Um, so let's open this up. Please excuse uh, the sound of plastic being rattled right next to the microphone. Um, really help that. I didn't even know it came in this little bag. That's pretty cool. I bought a T-34-85 uh, from Warlord that was made by Italeri, and it didn't come with that, so that's interesting. Oh, my sprues are stuck together somehow. Something's hooked. There we go. All right, so let's take a look at the hull sprue. Now, just look at the detail on this stuff. Um, let's see if I can get it to focus a little bit better. Look at the detail on the on the hull. The Zimmerit looks amazing. Um, the top of the hull is beautiful. Um, the bottom, of course, you're not going to be seeing this stuff, so it doesn't really need to be that detailed. Um, but the front, the lower glacis, as it's called, I'm pretty sure, um, it's very nice. I imagine this would be the back of the tank uh, here. There's some other little bits and bobs here. Um, the road wheels, uh, machine gun, I'm not quite sure. I don't know every part of tanks. I'm definitely not a mechanic or anything. Um, we got some, uh, maybe the driver's hatch? No. No, that would be the, the top turret hatch. Um, the front plate where the machine gun will go and stuff. And the driver port. The 88 gun, of course. Um, I think this is a turret ring believe so. There's a lot of little bits and bobs that I don't, I'm not quite sure. But here's the commander. And this is what I wanted to talk about. The commander, if my camera will focus, the commander looks pretty normal, you know? But then you compare him to a actual Lord Warlord Games model. You can see the difference. Um, they're the same scale. That's the funny thing. But where he is true scale, and this is heroic scale, Okay, they're the same size, rather, 28mm, uh, 156 scale, but Heroic makes this guy look huge um, compared to him. When he's on the tank, it doesn't look so bad, because you can see this tank is going to be huge. Um, yeah, it doesn't matter so much, but, you know, it's just a warning for anybody that wants uh, continuity and stuff. This is, um, I'm not planning on putting the commander in my tank. I don't put, I haven't put a commander in any of my bolt action tanks, because I personally prefer just seeing them. Uh, on the field, but I don't know. I might put him in there. I'm not quite sure. But here's the other uh, sprue. So we have the turret. And look how big, like how big of a block that turret was. It's awesome. Um, these are gonna go over the front of the tracks. You know, just a I don't know mud, not mud flaps, but like stop mud and of course also just extra armor. We have the tracks here. The tracks are absolutely beautiful and huge. Um, we just have you know track pieces that are on the edges going over the wheels. Uh, we have the gun mantlet. We have another uh, hatch. And yeah, I'm not quite sure about all these pieces. My apologies. Um, these are the side skirts for the tank. We have some, um, not these aren't road wheels. These are the what actually makes the uh, tracks turn. Again, I'm not quite sure about the terms. Um, apologies for that. And maybe that's um, exhaust there? No, that must be, I don't know. It's something for the wheels, uh, probably. But yeah, guys, that is the Tiger uh, pieces. Again, sorry that I don't know every single piece of the tank. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this thing built, and I will get back to you guys with the built model see you then. Alright, so that took a little while. Um, as I figured with an artillery kit, uh, the tracks were a bit of a pain to put on, uh, if I'm honest. They look fine now that the tank is all together, but um, I'm not sure. Yeah, see? You can see there. Um, I guess I messed up, and the way I put it together, they weren't long enough to actually reach each other, but I have stuff that can fill that in. Um, it's not too big of a deal, but it is a warning that the tracks probably won't line up. Um, but other than that, look at how beautiful this thing is. It is a beautiful machine. Um, let me just take the turret off. So we can just look at all of the nice little 
turret bits. Uh, managed to lose the machine gun already. Oh, there's a little gap here. That just needs to be pressed together. I'll fill that in as well. Um, but look at the top, the detail. It looks awesome. Um, I will be doing some size comparisons as well. Oh, okay, now that hook is still there. Um, but yeah, I managed to lose this machine gun already. I glued it in, and when I was uh, finishing the tank up, it fell off off my desk. I can't find it. So great, I already lost the machine gun. Um, so that's lovely. I'll probably find something, um, or I might I, I might find it, or I might just find something to replace it. Just stick like something like a little straight rod in there, just to look like a little tiny machine gun barrel or something. But yeah, um, and the turret itself is also very nice. You can see the detail, escape hatches and such. Um, I was a bit of an idiot, and I said that this these parts were like track guards or something stupid like that. Uh, it's the side of the turret. Like I, I don't know what I was thinking about. I think I was thinking about the King Tiger for a second, where it has those big uh, blocks of metal that go over the side, the front of the tracks. Um, but it's not this tank, obviously, and that was a bit foolish. Um, again, sorry for not knowing every part of the tank, but yeah. But that's that. Um, it's really nice. As you can see, I decided to not go for the commander because, like I said, I like my tanks um, being in like a combat-ready uh, build, like he's in the middle of a fight. Because, I mean, like if I'm going to play bolt action, that's what's happening. It's a fight. Um, so I like to imagine that the commanders would actually get inside the tank instead of being outside. There we go. The focus was off. But yeah, it is a beautiful tank. So I'm going to show you guys it next to some uh, German infantry. So we have a Fallschirmjäger and a Grenadier. Um, and the tank is... Obviously, it's not to scale. That's that's just the thing. This tank would be absolutely fucking huge if it was to scale. Um, if you've ever seen a person standing up next to a Tiger, it's a little bit bigger than that. Um... It's still bigger than other bolt action tanks, as it should be. Um, they they have scaled the tanks well. Uh, if I had a King Tiger, it would be even bigger than this. But for example, if I get some of my other tanks out, like my uh, Sherman, my American Sherman, um, which is missing some hatches, as you can see, <laughs> uh, which is a bit of a shame. You can see that um, it is uh, well, actually. Now that I look at them next to each other, the tiger is wider, of course. Uh, you can't really see this. This is a weird perspective. But, yeah, they're not actually um, that different in size. I think the Sher <laughs> is the Sherman actually taller? No, it's like the same size. Oh, well, okay, well, that's a bad example. Well, actually, no, then again, this is a Warlord Games tank. The Warlord Games tanks are really beefy. Um, let me see if I can find my uh, T-3485 that I mentioned. That should be scaled a little bit better. Um, but yeah, I might be completely wrong. They might be uh, the same size. Interesting. The tank felt a lot bigger when I was putting it together. Okay, that's a bit better. I mean, the T thirty four eighty five by no means was a was a small tank, but yeah, um, that's a bit better. Yeah, the Tiger is a, quite a bit bigger than the T thirty four, but yeah. I'm very excited to actually have this thing built though because I love Tigers and now I have my own personal one that I can keep on my desk. Um, but yeah, I also forgot to show um, that transfers came in the box. It's not the biggest deal in the world. It's a bunch of red, white, and it's a bunch of red and white numbers uh, and some uh, German crosses or whatever. I, I'm not quite sure what those are called, but yeah, you can put those like on the side of the on the side of the turret and all that stuff wherever you want to put them. But yeah. Uh, also, the gun moves, yay, except for the fact that it doesn't stay up. It says in the instructions not to glue this, but I don't see why you wouldn't, because it can't actually keep the gun up, so it's kind of pointless. But, oh well. But yeah, guys, that has been the Tiger 6 um, Offs E Tiger, or did I say Tiger 6? Panzer 6 Offs E Tiger 1, or just Tiger for short. Um, I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you look forward to uh, the continuation of the German, Ar German Army Project. Until the next one, guys, this has been Overkill, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.